everyone. So this is video number 13 in my etiquette series. And today we are going to talk about how to be the perfect guest. Okay. So I've gotten a lot of questions from you about different aspects of being a guest. Like, should I offer to help or when should I leave or what should I talk about? So I thought I would give you seven tips to being the perfect guest. So this is for anybody that has any questions about being a guest in someone's home. Okay. So tip number one, RSVP at an appropriate time. So even before you get to the event, RSVP within a couple of days, preferably for the event. So if they've given you notice, let's say it's Monday and they're inviting you for an event that is later in the week, let's say Thursday evening, Friday or Saturday, you should RSVP as soon as possible because it's less than one week until the date of the invitation. However, if they invite you several weeks in advance, you can wait a couple of days but really you should RSVP as early as possible. That is the most polite thing, and that is setting you as a polite individual even before you arrive so that you are already the perfect guest. Okay, number two, bring a gift. Okay, so never show up to somebody's home empty-handed. There's a lot of different gifts that you can bring. I would suggest things like candies, chocolates, uh, cookies like biscuits like this, hand soaps, uh, a potted plant, something nice for the home. Uh, something like a glassware, usually like a crystal or a glass bowl or candle holders, things of this nature. If you want to send flowers, I would like to give some advice on that. If you'd like to send flowers, a really good thing to do is to send the flowers in advance because you'll probably be arriving the same time as many other people and you do not want to have to hand the host flowers and then the host has to go find a place to put the flowers or a vase for the flowers and that will distract them from their guests arriving so in order to make it more smooth for the host send the flowers in advance and when you're choosing your flowers try to choose flowers that have a low allergic reaction to it so for example roses or orchids those flowers, peonies, it is the season of peonies right now. So peonies, they do not have a lot of allergies to those flowers. So it's better to choose flowers like that and not flowers that smell too strongly. So lilies, although beautiful, are not a great choice because they have a very strong scent and some people really care for that scent and some people do not. And that can really dominate the smell in a room and you may not want that. So try to avoid those. Okay, tip number three, socialize. So a successful party is marked by a couple of things, but one of them is how your guests interact with each other. So if you want to contribute to being a good dinner party or a good event, interact with the other guests. Plus it's an opportunity to make new friends. You never know who you're going to meet at a party and what kind of great things can come from that. So when you are at the party, try to do small conversation, meet the other people. Don't just sit in the corner or in a click. Or maybe if you know a couple people at the dinner party, you don't know the other ones, but you only make an effort on speaking to the people you know, try to avoid doing that. Really put yourself out there, make conversation, get to know everyone else at the party. You'll look like a really great guest. Okay, tip number four, you want to be responsible and respectful. So being responsible and respectful means in those conversations, people, please do not start arguments. Please do not start debates or bring up subjects that are maybe controversial or could cause some issues. So in general, those topics are religion, politics, money, things of that nature, things that can be polarizing. For example, try not to do that. If somebody else brings up that conversation and drags you into the conversation, see if you can try to remove yourself from it. Don't contribute to an argument if you can, because that would be disruptive to the party. If you have made a mess or you have a glass, for example, and you want, make sure you take that glass into an area that is going to be cleared. For example, don't leave your they have cocktail napkins. Don't leave a paper cocktail napkin left around. Try to find a trash to put it into. If you have used a glass, if there's an area where glasses are being kept once they've been used, there is not somebody coming around and cleaning up, please put them with that. If you want to bring it with you to the next room that you're going into, that kind of a thing. If you have come with children, please be responsible for your children. So if your children are invited to the dinner party because there are other children in the home, check on them, make sure that they're okay, be responsible for them. It's not like um, kind of like a daycare situation where you just drop off your child and then it's finished for the evening. Please still check on them because you are present and you will look like a very good guest to your host. Okay, tip number five, offer to help. So I've actually received this question from many people. Do I offer to help the hostess or host? Absolutely. Please always offer to help. You will probably be declined very politely. No, that's okay. Thank you so much. But you do sound like a very polite and kind person for offering. It's always nice to hear, frankly, it's always nice to hear from the guests that have come to my home that they would like to help and shows that they're engaged and they're being very gracious. So always offer to help. Tip number six, 
Master the art of saying goodbye. Okay, so always say goodbye when you leave a dinner party. Never just stand up and leave or leave a room. Say it's a large dinner party and people are leaving and you've just gotten your coat and you're gonna just leave. Don't just leave, always spend some time saying goodbye to the host, thanking them so much, both the host and the hostess or the host, and also send say your goodbyes to the other people in the room. So if you've met people that you've never met before, please make sure you say goodbye, say that you'd like to stay in touch. People that you do know, say goodbye, hope to see you the next time at the next event. Always make a gracious exit. And this is the other part. So learning when to exit, when to leave a party. So usually there are some cues. There's always that first person that's going to leave. You can always follow that person. It's better not to do a mass exodus from a party. So one person leaves and then everybody else starts to leave. It's better to give it a little bit of time. So if you notice that people are leaving, give it a couple of minutes, have a little end your conversations, end maybe your coffee or if you're having tea, because usually that's indicating the end of the evening and then graciously excuse yourself to leave. Don't just run off with the crowd that is leaving because that can be kind of insulting. If everybody just stands up and leaves once dessert is served and coffee is served and everything's finished and I leave. So it's better to be a little bit, to stagger it a little bit if you can. Also to know that people do want you to leave is important too. So if you've noticed that people are leaving, the conversation is really winding down, you're just staying and leaving and you can see the host is kind of walking around or maybe the hostess is walking around, they're trying to figure out what's going on, it really is time to leave. So graciously excuse yourself because it's definitely time for the event to be ending. Okay, and the last point is the thank you. So obviously you will say thank you when you leave, but really follow up. And I always say with a nice handwritten note because it's really appreciated. It's a really special touch. At a minimum, you want to follow up with some kind of electronic message. So preferably you send a nice message with the person's name. So. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Ali, it was wonderful to see you yesterday evening. Thank you so much for having us. We really had a wonderful time. We really hope to have the opportunity to see you again in the near future. Or if you know them well, dear Ali and Noura, it was wonderful to see you yesterday evening. I had so much fun. The guests were wonderful. The food was even better. Thank you so much for having us. It's always such a great time at your home. So something personalized, not just thank you. We had a nice time and finished. Again, better always a handwritten note, but at a minimum, send a really nice message, preferably the day after the event. So those are my seven tips for being the perfect guest. I hope you found it helpful. Please check out the other videos in my series. Please share this video with anybody else that may find it helpful. Thank you.